Yeah. Happy New Year. Thanks to you guys. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our evening Zoom. Happy New Year. It's great to see everyone. We'll go ahead and get started. I'm so glad to see so many of you on here. Uh, certainly, dear friends, supporters, uh, volunteers, our campaign team. It's. Uh, I want to wish you all a happy new year. I hope you had a great time with your family and uh, maybe some football. I don't know. Uh, a lot of people are cheering for different groups. So I hope your team won. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it was. It's. It's so good. I want to just start reminding everyone uh, just how thankful I am for you. And I'm thankful for what God is doing in our campaign. Uh, man cannot do what God has called you and I to do. Uh, we have 10 more nights of this. And most of you come from a, a, a Christian background. And so I want to make a parallel for you uh, with just the group that we have on right now. In any time you've had a revival in your church, usually maybe it's a five night or in the, it, in the not so distant past, we would have two week revivals, not even just one week. It'd be two weeks. And, uh, and then in the fifties and sixties, they would be month long revivals. And then in the times when there were, uh, the great reformation and others, it was months uh, and so uh, I'm not asking people to commit. I'm not asking each of you and then all of your uh, networks and the people that you know to commit to uh, to months of this. What I'm asking each of you and what I'm asking uh, all those who want to, who are a part of our campaign, what I'm asking for is 10 nights. 10 nights. You don't have to leave your house in treacherous weather or in uh, you know rainy conditions or cold weather, wherever you are. And I appreciate Melody who mentioned she was on the road, but uh, is a part of this. The great thing about Zoom is wherever you are, you can still connect. You can be on mm -hmm. mute. You can take not to be on video if you prefer, but you can have your earbuds in. You could be in a noisy environment, but you're still able to be a part of what God is doing with this group and with our campaign. Uh, you know what's the most exciting thing to me about this is you can't do this and I can't do this. But the strategy that God has given us, he can do. And if he does that through us, it will absolutely rattle the political powers. And you know that we battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers uh, and spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm telling you, uh, if the immigrant community of Iowa can rise to this occasion, it will be historical no matter where this campaign goes. No matter where this goes. Because it's not about me. This is a platform to lift every single immigrant voice in Iowa no matter what country you're from. And the more that we've moved forward and walked in this divine strategy, the more clear it is to me that it's not even about our campaign. It is about lifting your voice, the voice that has been silenced, the voice that has had no influence in American politics whatsoever. But I believe it is your time. Look at how America is without your voice. I think we need it. I think it is past time uh, because what you and what we share are our values, our family values. We we share common sense. Uh, you know, whether it's economic or whether it's national security or whether it's uh, family uh, or integrity, ethics. You know, morality. These are these and these are things that we share. Uh, but increasingly, it seems like people in politics don't share these values. And so it really unites us. And of course, one of the most am amazing and divine things is three weeks ago, this strategy could not have even been a thing because the U.S. was just sanctioning Liberia. We were just moving forward. Uh, uh, that was just happening. And then for us, me to take this stand against that 
uh, with the leadership of uh, Marie Scott Wilson, who congratulations on uh, your doctorate, madam. Uh, congratulations on that great achievement. Uh, but in with these with the, these people bringing this information of furthering American corruption, it's everywhere we look. It's what I've stood against for for months in this campaign. From the very beginning, I said I would do right by all Americans and by all people and nations of the earth. What that means is the Democrats are not my enemy. There are ideologies that I vehemently disagree with, but the people are not my enemy. Uh, the Chinese people are not my enemy. The Russian people are not. Iranians are not my enemy. Uh, but there, are, there is wickedness and corruption all over the world, and there are, there are problems and uh, there are wars, both spiritual wars and physical wars and biological wars. There is information wars and um, cyber wars, and there's going to be uh, utility grid wars. We are in, in, in an unprecedented time of American history, of human history. But I think it's a great time uh, to be alive. It's an exciting time. Uh, and here's the amazing thing. It's the time that God has called me and you to step up and to rise up. He's calling us to be faithful and obedient. Our strategy to win Iowa is simple. Our strategy to win Iowa depends on you. It depends on me being available to you and to your networks every single night for the next 10 days. Okay, at this time, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. That's what my responsibility is. In addition to the the uh, seeming limitless, uh, unlimited calls and, and meetings during the day, I am my schedule is to be with you every night at 8 p.m. Eastern, no matter where in this country that I am. Because you, what your part is, is to bring at least five people every night. Invite five. You're going to have to invite 50 to have five come. You know that, right? So if you want to have five people tomorrow night on this Zoom that you personally invited, you're going to have to invite 50 of them. That means you might have an email list of friends. You might have uh, a, a closed uh, WhatsApp group that you're in or a text group with your family uh, in Iowa or people that you know in Iowa. But I, we're, we're trying to mobilize for Iowa because there's two things that guarantee us the, the victory, what, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. But the, the two things that he's, he's calling us to do is, number one, to organize and mobilize. Okay, that's what he's call, called us to do. That's what our obedience looks like in this. Our, our organize, organizing is, first of all, uh, by being on these calls and making it available to all Iowans and all immigrants, especially the immigrant communities in Iowa, okay, so that they can get a chance to know me personally. This is not something that you normally get to do, uh, you know, with, with other presidential candidates. And so we want to invite them. Uh, we'll always leave time for a Q&A at the end where people can ask questions uh, through the chat, and then we'll, we'll accept, uh, you know, I'll answer what I can. Uh, and so that's what we'll do every single night for the next 10 nights. And then on the 13th, January 13th, uh, God willing, I'll be there in person. And we're going to have just a like a pep rally, a time together, a meet and greet uh, at the, there uh, at a restaurant by the state capitol in Des Moines, Iowa. And then on the 14th, we're going to uh, be a, a, attending and hope and maybe having a worship service, uh, but but worshiping together regardless on that Sunday. And I'll do some media interviews. And then we'll have the caucus Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Time, uh, January 15th. And by the way, that's MLK Day. And I haven't heard any other campaign talk about this. But what better way to celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day than to caucus for Roland Roberts for president, the best friend Africa has ever had uh, in United States politics? I thought how cool. I mean, it's it's more than it's something you can tangibly do instead in, except just going to a parade. Like there is something that every immigrant in Iowa can do that day that is meaningful, that actually moves their agenda forward, that supports them and, and the needs of this communities uh, by, by voting and caucusing for Roland Roberts president on MLK Junior Day. I think that is just so cool that God gave us the strategy with, with the immigrant communities of Iowa and it happens to fall on that day. I'm telling you, it is not lost on me. 
And I think that is a tangible call to action that every single uh, registered voter in Iowa uh, immigrant uh, should mobilize around. And so I want you to challenge and encourage them. This is not like any other uh, election. Here's what I mean by that. Everyone, the, currently, all of the people who are going to go vote in the Iowa caucus, they're going to vote for Trump or DeSantis or Haley, a few for Vivek, uh, but, you know, mainly mainly uh, Trump and DeSantis uh, and, and then sprinkled, uh, you know, with the other two as well. Uh, but those votes are going to be split, okay? Uh, even if Trump takes half the, and then there's the, the other three kind of divvy them up a little bit. Uh, but either way, my, I'm not relying on one single current caucus goer to vote for Roland Roberts for president. I'm not counting on a single one at this time. I want us to have thousands of registered uh, voters, Iowans, to caucus for me that night, okay? and uh, from the immigrant communities that we mobilize over these next 10 days. All right, that is the objective. And so the only way to do that is to build our Zoom numbers every night. And then it culminates into a big uh, rallies, both the, 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 the meet and greet, and then also uh, the worship service on Sunday, and then Monday night at the caucuses. So I said that it takes a couple of things, or, uh, organizing, which is what we're doing now, and then the second thing is it takes mobilizing, meaning ultimately, even getting, if we had thousands on the Zoom by the 10th night, by January 10th, that doesn't do a single thing on caucus night. We could have thousands and still come up 1% or 0%, right? That could happen. But with your help and the help of God, what we need is thousands to show up on January 15th. And even if they aren't registered, they can still show support. They can't vote, but they can be there to show support. Uh, and so we have a Google spreadsheet that will be posted in the chat that has all of the caucus locations. And the way it works is we will be choosing, uh, actually with the help of uh, uh, Dr. Wilson, Marie Wilson, and other Iowa leaders, Pastor Success and others, will choose who gets to stand up at each location and and nominate me and give a a brief two to three minute overview of why people, why everyone there should vote Roland Roberts for president. And each, by the way, that's the way it works for all of them. Someone has to stand up and nominate Donald Trump, and here's why you should vote for Donald Trump. Here's nominating you know Ron DeSantis, and here's why you should nominate uh, vote for him. And then. We need somebody, a representative at every single caucus location to stand up, nominate Roland Roberts for president, and then share why why everyone should vote for me. I can tell you that they they say between 30 to 40 percent of caucus goers are still undecided when they walk in that door. Can you imagine? 30 to 40 percent are still undecided and they are they can be their vote can be swayed uh, by a strong, compelling. Uh, here's why they should vote for you. And so it's very important who we have represent us at each caucus location. But go to the Google spreadsheet uh, that they post in the chat here uh, and, and put your name of which location you will, you will promise to be at by 7 p.m. on MLK Day, uh, January 15th to caucus, okay? Uh, and then we want to spread that and get all kinds of people signed up so we have a lot of people because... I want to not just have someone to nominate me at every single caucus. I want to have hundreds of people at each one uh, to vote for me as well. Uh, I want us to bring our own votes and not count on any of the people who are already there. Uh, and so if we bring all of our own votes, they can split the vote with the few people who are already going to be there, okay? So we have to organize and mobilize. That is our strategy. And we're doing it in two parts, get people on the Zoom so they can get to know me, get to know us, get to know what we're about, and then also uh, ha get people committed to showing up at the location January 15th, 
All right, so with the caucus locations are, are available. We have provided those. And, uh, and we want to get everyone registered for which locations to make sure we have complete coverage. All right, so with that, I would like to give, uh, introduce a couple of people to say a few words uh, and give their word of greeting on, on, on why they're supporting us, our candidacy and a part uh, of our campaign. Uh, so let me start uh, with Prince, uh, Prince Amenahu from Nigeria. Uh, sir, if you kindly unmute and give a few words on why you're supporting Roland Roberts for president. Yeah, thank you so much, Your Excellency, Dr. Roland Roberts. You know, you've always been a mentor to me and a leader that has integrity. And um, you've always represented a great value to young people like me. And I believe that if you're the president, the world will be a better place because I've had the opportunity to listen to you and I've had the opportunity to, you know, be a part of, you know, where you have spoken and spoken loud about your vision for a better America. And you're ready to unite the nation and also unite the world. These are your core values and which aligns with me. Uh, I want to also welcome each and every one of you. It's a great honor to be in your midst. Happy New Year to everyone. Um, I want everyone to realize that this is being a part of this has a calling to each and every one of us that we are about to make history because when we stand on the side of a man that embodies greatness, then we are part of greatness too. And we are about to make a change in Iowa. Iowa is a place that we can always stand and with our commitment, we will show that we are a force to be reckoned with in a very good way because they will say that we stand for values, we stand for greatness, and we stand for change, which is what we represent. So I want to encourage each and every one of you, this is a very, very good time to exercise our franchise to support the right candidate, which is the right presidential candidate that can move America forward. So let us be a part of this change. Let us spread the message to each and every one of us, every one of our families, our friends out there. Tell them there's, that we have a presidential candidate that will unite the nation, that will listen and inspire young people to like me. So spread the message, let us be a part of change, a change for good, a change that will bring America forward. And also to Iowa, you become, we become a force to be reckoned with because we also have a say. Everybody has what to contribute. And we have a candidate that is a light to the world and the light to America. So I encourage each and every one of us, let's go out there, grassroots, knock on doors, call on people, call on friends, tell people, encourage people. It's not gonna be easy, but at the end, we are going to be happy that our candidate was able to emerge. And you can imagine America will now be a light on us and they want to know why, then we can push our cause to the rest of the nation and for support so that he can become the next president. Thank you so much. Thank you, each and every one of you. Thank you, Prince. Thank you for those words. Uh, we are most grateful for you and your support. Uh, I would like to uh, introduce Dr. Marie Wilson, who is the uh, really the, was the inspiration behind keeping me informed on a lot of the matters in Liberia. Uh, she has a dear heart for obviously her homeland and also uh, as an American citizen. Uh, wants to see America do what is right. And so uh, I appreciate you. I'd like to turn the floor uh, over to you here for a few moments. Excuse me, uh, my voice, you know, still is not that great, but I'm honored and happy to be here. And hearing the name Dr. Marie, you know, I gotta get used to that. I bless God for that and I stay humble. So um, I'm so grateful to Dr. Uh, Roland Roberts for this opportunity to come you know, and um, and to uh, actually accept my call, and to see how he can help make a difference globally, not just because of Mama Liberia, but this was a, something that was devastating to me. It is still devastating that I was even willing to deny my citizenship as a U.S. citizen. Okay, I believe we've lost her. Uh, we'll welcome her back as soon as 
she is able. Uh, let me go ahead and welcome uh, one of the other great uh, supporters who has actually gave a speech uh, that included uh, our candidacy most recently, uh, Mr. James Gwick. Uh, James, I'd like to, if you'd kindly unmute. And uh, oh, she is back. Okay, okay, go ahead. I don't know what's happening. I heard someone in Toronto. But anyway, I'm here. Um, so like I was saying, I'm so grateful that Dr. Roland Roberts decided to listen to my call and my concern. Like I said, being a U.S. citizen all my life, not all my life, being here from a teenage days, to see that, you know, my country, Mama Liberia, who I know to be under the U.S., that is like she's been her, the daughter to uh, the U.S., and to see that things that was happening in my country that I know how uh, the U.S. have a major role to play in it, pertaining to the, the uh, they are called it unnecessary sanctions. You know, if someone is guilty, let the court of law prove it. But if there's no evidence, there shouldn't be such thing put on a certain ethnic group of people or a certain class of people. So having said that, I decided to withdraw voting in the U.S. permanently until I reached out to Dr. Roberts and he was able to hear my call and said that he, I mean, he's not the president right now, but we know by God's grace, once he becomes the president, he's a God-fearing person. He's willing to make change. And he believes in order for change to come, the United States of America need God, and which is the most important thing. With God, all things are possible. So having said that, I'm grateful to be here. Thanks to everyone. And we know we're going to win this. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Wilson. And I can tell you, I do believe that we are just like uh, Joshua and we are marching around the walls of Jericho and we're not using the normal tools. Weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Uh, we're not using money uh, because money is the, is the idol of politics. The, they don't care who you are. They think if you have enough money, you can win. That's because they can manipulate so many things. They can you know, make you seem like you're something that you're not. And uh, we're just not running that way. And uh, it is authentic. It is real. If we win, it's going to be because God put us there and you put us there and you and we're all faithful in what we're supposed to do. That's it. Uh, but we're we're focused on because here's the deal. The only thing money would do between now and January 15th that helps us get the mo the word out more. OK, we absolutely you know, we fundraise, we're, we're mobilizing. But we don't have a hundred million dollars like Donald Trump and other people have, right? That's not how we're going to do it. We're doing it by being faithful, uh, and with your help and and us moving forward together, that is what does it. And we're just marching. We're doing what we're supposed to do for the next ten days, and then what, to watch those walls fall. Uh, it does feel like Gideon's three hundred. Like Prince said, it is historic. This this effort is historic. What we do. Will uh, will absolutely change the strategy for all candidates going forward. If 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 the immigrant communities of Iowa coalesce and mobilize for January fifteenth, that is it. That is it. January sixteenth will change. It would be on every newspaper in America on January 16th if we can get 20,000 plus immigrants in the Iowa caucus on January 15th at 7 p.m. That is the mission. So I appreciate those words. I want to uh, give a moment now to uh, uh, Mr. James Guick. He is the chairman of the South Sudan uh, uh, Council Caucus of the United States. And uh, he is uh, he and some of my relationships from the U.S. delegation to South Sudan. Uh, th there's a lot of crossover and uh, we know they know a lot of similar people. So, uh, Mr. Gook, I'd like to welcome you to take the floor at this time for a few moments for your word of greeting, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ronald Robert, uh, the future president of the United States that I would like to believe. Uh, Happy New Year to you, your lovely family, and all our team. Uh, I am going to be brief because I came here in some of the prayers. 
But I can assure you, uh, as you guys have seen some of the uh, report that I uh, put on our groups, uh, that we actually get to work. Uh, we recruit a lot. We face some challenges uh, with regard to meeting the deadline of registration. I was able to identify a couple of people that need to be helped register. Uh, out of the 29, we're able to help seven register, but uh, it's quite a challenge. Uh, but what is not a challenge is when your message went through to the people that I spoke, uh, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, everybody just fell in love with your website. I give uh, away the website to get more. And uh, a lot of people found their new uh, person that they can vote because a lot of people were, uh, there was a question that faced me twice. Uh, the first question is like, does he have a chance? And my answer is that you the one who will give the chance. When you hear about somebody up on a poll, they are up on a poll because of the supporter. So if you willing to vote for him and campaign for him and I'm doing the same thing, then you the one gonna give him a chance. You know, he's counting on you. So the better way to ask that question, do you have a chance to make somebody uh, that you want to get to the White House? And my answer to you that you have a chance to do that. And Dr. Ronald, Rob, I mean, Roland, sorry, I, keep, <laughs> I almost say Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Roland Robert is, b believes in you, believes you have a chance to do that. So now it's up to you to answer that call and uh, continue to answer the call in the future. So I can tell you for facts that even uh, the two events that I went to, uh, I've been receiving a lot of phone calls, uh, people who wanted to know more, but also receive a lot of promise that people are willing to jump in. Today, we were supposed to have at least five people join this conference. Dr. Henry, yeah. who, who was doing research at uh, you know, Iowa State University. Uh, it's got his PhD from Japan. And also Dr. Uh, Jaden, who was supposed to join us. Uh, former minister in South Sudan government, but he's a U.S. citizen and came back, lives in Ames. He's willing to handle Ames. His name is Dow. So I, I lined up uh, a couple of volunteers that already actually start working. So I don't want to prolong. I'm here to report to the team that uh, if I'm gone, that means I'm really getting my hand dirty uh, to get the work done. And of course, all our promise or our work will only be uh, be realized on the 16th. So we cannot, uh, I mean, we we don't want to take anything for granted. We know we have to work for every vote. And like I say, yes, I am representing African community, South Sudanese, but my recruitment include today uh, some uh, white Americans who work with my daughter. I asked him officially that I want you to support uh, Dr. Roland. He asked for more information, I gave him information, and also uh, Hispanic. So I'm reaching out to all the people who have the right to vote, and of course, priority in our uh, community. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, and I'm hoping when will you get here, whether well, whether or not you be willing to meet. Uh, with some uh, small leaders within our community center. Uh, Maria Wilson, Scott came there and visited us, and I think she she interviewed me, and she posted there. So uh, I know your schedule will be busy, and we also want it to be productive. Uh, since we are volunteering and we are working for you, if there is a place where you must go and assure the recruitment, that we will prioritize on that. But if you will have a, a, a 10 to 15 minute drop by, that will be great. So I will leave that up to the campaign manager here in Iowa, uh, who I don't know uh, if there is a specific person uh, in charge of the overall campaign in 99 county, so that we can free up as much of your schedule as possible uh, and go to that campaign manager for our uh, ongoing questions. Uh, so that's... Uh, the one, uh, what am I forgetting? I was about to say something else, but I guess I can come back later and flash my mic. 
I just want to say I'm delighted and I'm uh, really um, happy that there is a positive response from all the places where I've been. There is a positive response. Uh, and then we're going to continue to expand our uh, ground. Thank you, Mr. Aguik. Wow, what a great report. And um, I know Stefan Wetzel, who's been posting in the Iowa group, uh, the WhatsApp group, uh, is a he'll be with me on the ground in Iowa and is probably the best one to coordinate scheduling uh, to make sure that I'm where I need to be. I would love to be able to meet uh, with, with you and your leaders uh, briefly. I'm sure we can accommodate in some way. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and also, uh, if um, one of our leaders, if we can put, uh, or people who have access to the WhatsApp group, if you would post in the chat, maybe some of the graphics, uh, also the link to the Google spreadsheet on the chat for Zoom, um, that would be great. Uh, so that the visitors uh, would be able to have access to signing up for their respective caucus location. Uh, I want to give I, a... I, oh, yes. I remember what I forget. It's just going to be a minute. Yes. It's basically I'm a little ignorant on adding people on WhatsApp. So uh, Maria and the rest of the team, I'm going to pass you the numbers of people that need to be added. I tried to figure it out. I couldn't figure it out <laughs> at all. <laughs> so all that's right. what I forget, actually. All right, I will. That's a that's a good that's a good problem. That's this is organizing. We're organizing. That's yes. what team that's what team is. You know, uh, now that's that's wonderful. You know, uh, Mr. Gook, to to something that you said, uh, you know, I've campaigned for a year now. In fact, it was a year ago uh, tomorrow that I actually filed with the FEC, and I say it a year ago tomorrow. Technically. I had gone to sleep on the second. Uh, Sunday was the second last year, and uh, if if I recall correctly, no, it was it was it was a uh, yeah. Sunday was the yeah. That's right. And uh, and so I was going to uh, do it on the Monday. I ended up staying up through the night, and I knew at uh, about two thirty or three a.m. I was awake, and uh, I just knew that uh, I was not even supposed to delay. I was supposed to do it right then. And so we finalized the process in the early morning hours. Uh, and that's what so, uh, launched it. So it's been one year, almost to the to the hour. And uh, I can tell you that from campaigning all across the country, in Iowa, uh, in, in numerous states, uh, in conservative states, in liberal states, and, you know, with people who have never voted, with people of all ages, people of all backgrounds, all religion, sexual orientation, any it's diverse as there is hum, human kind. That's who I have been campaigning with, and you know we have not been rejected by by any group or any uh, type person or you know it's it's very interesting that the message that that we have resonates with everyone regardless of the normal issues that divide us and and so that is very unique as we all know in politics because every single candidate has they make their rise based on catering to certain what they would say their their base or uh who their group of supporters is and we haven't done that now some would say well you can't win the presidency if you can't win the primary. And I do agree that is traditional logic. So you have to find some group of the primary voters, usually pander to them, and then move your positions. But I didn't want to do that. From day one, I said, I'm going to run the same as I would for uh, the primary as I will for the general, so that I'm not going to shift my message. I'm not going to run one way and then change because to me, that's not authentic. It's a lack of integrity. You can call it strategy all you want. To me, it is a lack of integrity because if the words come out of my mouth in the primary and I say, I will do this and I will do that. And then in the general, I kind of say, well, we've got new information and I'm going to do it this way. That's a fraud. To me, that's what makes a fraud. And I think that's what America's tired of. I, and, and I think we see through it. It's just that we're not usually given enough options. And so uh, if, if, if God and the people want to put me there, then uh, we absolutely will be there. 
but it's been really exciting to see. I remember we were at, in fact, Stefan and I were at, in Los Angeles campaigning in Hollywood. I was speaking at an African event, I uh, actually, African charity uh, event uh, there in Hollywood. And uh, it was everyone you can imagine uh, from, from, in fact, uh, Sharon Stone was supposed to be there. Her son was there and um, uh, other, other celebrities. And, you know, take Sharon Stone or someone like that who's from the, who's typically uh, not necessarily voted for Republicans or conservative or Christian or anything, you know, uh, that's just not, there hasn't been a candidate that spoke to her like that. Um, and so it's interesting to see the people who normally would never support, uh, you know, anyone or, or, and actually most candidates would not even talk or visit with people uh, that are not of like mind like that. And for us to have so much support that night, uh, and Stefan can tell you, there was a line of people wanting to talk and we kept trying to leave. We were actually flying out that night to fly back to the East Coast. And there was a line, there were just more and more and more people that kept wanting to talk. Uh, and it was, it was just a wonderful time. And one of the comments that we got from that uh, was, it was a very wealthy uh, individual who wasn't even supposed to be there, but after meeting with me earlier that afternoon said, I just wanna observe, can I be there? Came to the event, was going to only stay a few minutes or wait until my speech was over and leave, but instead stayed the whole night. And what they were most moved by was how diverse the groups were that were receiving us uh, and the people that were just, it was like there were no walls. People who said, I'm, I'm against politics. Like I'm against all of it. I don't care what side you're on, Republican, Democrat, and far this, far that. I just don't want anything, anything to do with any of it. And they were like, but I like you. And I like you. So I'm, I guess I'm going to have to register to vote now. I guess I'm going to have to do this because it gave them hope for America and for uh, the future. So uh, I appreciate you uh, saying that. I think it's a, a key differentiator. Uh, I, it is true. We, to be, it may be true. Let me say that. To be the Republican nominee, we have to win the primary. I can tell you that there have been plenty of Republican presidents that did not win the primary. Uh, there have been five presidents that did not even win the win the popular vote. Um, and there's been two presidents that did not win uh, the vote, the popular vote, or the uh, or at least one that did not win the Electoral College or the popular vote. Uh, and so when you start looking at how to become the president of the United States, we have to get out of our own head, get out of our own way, and realize that God is doing this the way he wants to do it. But I cannot compromise my integrity my stands, the, my beliefs, which are not just uh, what I believe is best for America, which is to do right and to be honest with Americans and to do right by all people and nations on earth. That will end American corruption, not because I put in laws, not because I create an anti-corruption agency. Some of those in the countries uh, around the world are the most corrupt of all. I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter. It's not because I put in these anti-corruption agencies. It's because I will do right by people. It's a lot simpler than what we always try to make it. And so uh, I'm I'm just full for that word. Uh, and I believe that you are exactly uh, right, Mr. Gook. We're so thankful for you. I want to give Pastor Success now, uh, if you would kindly uh, unmute and share a word. Pastor Success was the first one to retrieve me from the airport uh, when I, the first time I went to Iowa uh, for this campaign. And so uh, he has been a, a great blessing and encouragement to me. Uh, and I remember our very first conversation, we went to breakfast as soon as I landed and I got to hear what was important to him. So Pastor Success, I'd like to turn it to you for a few a few words. Yeah, I guess you hear me, but I don't know why my the video is kind of misbehaving, but I can talk beyond the video. Would that be okay? Yes, sir, we can hear you fine. Okay, so I... Again, want to say thank you, Dr. Roland. Uh, from the first day we met you and we interacted with you, the first question you posted to Adam Vito, Vito was, uh, are you guys part of your country party? And I told you, yes, I'm fully into my country party, you know. And I also told you that uh, the president, George Weah, is, you know, our friend and we support him and so on. But there's one thing you told me that drew my attention I decided to rally my support around you and encourage other people to come on board. 
is that you said that the uh, United States, when they have you know, diplomatic dialogue with you, while you guys are sitting there on the table, they'll be kicking you on the table, kicking your legs, hitting you on the table. And then when you get upset and then react, maybe physically kind of slap there, they'll be like, what did I do? You know, and you'll be like, well, you were just kicking me on the table. They said, no, I didn't do anything because probably nobody saw that on the table. And that's why they think that they are innocent. So when you say that to me, and I, when I came home, it was something that played on me for a, for, for a couple of days. Even the time I was with you taking the round all over in Iowa, it was just something that kept playing on my mind. So I said, no, he need our support. And that is why my way, the way I work, I'm not the person that is up there, you know, keep talking, talking, and doing what, you know. And, and I love the way, you know, Sis Mary or uh, Dr. Mariska Wilson and uh, Brother James is going about this, you know. My strategy is, look, I will talk to opinion leader of the African community. And it was my prayer to talk to more, especially when you talk up, you told how you told me how you, you know your, your relationship with South Sudan and the rest of it. I did okay, I need to bring the South Sudan community on board. But then again, I start asking, how do I do it? Who knows the Sudan president? How can I get around? And then one day I just went to a shop and I saw James. I quoted him. I'm like, I was looking at him. I said, that guy is from Sudan. I need to talk to him. And then I engaged him. And he blew my mind of how he been engaged in the politics in America and begin to show me evidence. I'm like, you need to come aboard. This man we're talking about, you read about him. He said, but I haven't seen you in the primary. I said, no, he's been on the primary. And I began to give him due date. And, and Mariska Wilson is also been there working hard, reaching out to you, you know, linking you with our country sanction and all this stuff. That's good. But what I'm doing at the back is I'm talking to the community leaders of the African community. I'm meeting the, 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 the president of the Kenya community in, in Iowa tomorrow. I've already talked to the president of the Library Association. I think he's, he's on, but he's just kind of listening because he's busy. And 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 I'm also supposed to meet the Sevaludian president. Uh, or yet I'm hoping, I'm also hoping to meet the Burundians. They have a huge population too in, 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 in Iowa to meet the Burundian and then also sell the ideology of your presidency to them. So we are working, you know, behind the scenes. We're not sleeping, you know. Yeah, we're working, and we 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 hope that uh, your coming to Iowa will be a resounding victory, and then you all have the time, you know, to meet you know the, the African community and really talk to them about yourself before we even go to the primary. So thank you again. Um, I'm happy working with you, and I'm happy working with your team. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Success. That's a good word. And I'm very grateful for you and your leadership and what you have to share. At this time, uh, I want to turn the call over to Mr. Greg Wool. Uh, Greg uh, is understands what meet, what it takes to win in Iowa. Uh, he has helped uh, many campaigns win in different ways, and uh, so uh, I want to turn the call to him to give a few words on how. We can move forward together. Obviously, we talked about mobilizing, uh, and he will he will be able to give some insight into specifically further how you can help. So, Greg, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you very much, and I want to make sure you can all hear me. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Excellent. So, ultimately, I mean, we are given an opportunity um, to to really make a difference here in Iowa. Iowa has traditionally been a state where faith has been very important. And it's, it is so amazing that that is joined together with such a, 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 a strong African community that we didn't even know existed in, in Iowa, um, which is God putting all this, the pieces together um, to make this an, an opportunity that really is, that could be historic. And you know when I talk to when I hear the other candidates speaking, and I I worked on many campaigns, and I watched the debates for the primary, 
the one thing that's lacking is authenticity. Authenticity is lacking. Without, you know, Donald Trump is probably the only other candidate in this election um, who has something that is unique that stands out with him, and he's not even showing up to these debates. This is a unique opportunity because what's missing is really, I believe, God's God's touch on the primary. I feel like something's lacking, and the reason it's lacking is because people haven't met our candidate. And I truly believe that you know, you know, when Jesus came, he didn't come. He didn't do things the way we thought things would get done. He didn't come the way that a lot of the Jewish people thought the Messiah would come. He came in a way that was his way to come. And he came from outcasts. He came from people that were, their voices were not heard. And I feel that this campaign has the feelings of that, that same divinity. Matt, we're going, and, and Roland said, it doesn't matter who I'm talking to. He's walking into things, and God is sending him on that way. Um, and, and I and I and I truly believe that God put me here and you here all, all of us on this call, um, you know, on this on this mission. Um, not because the mission is about Rowan, it's much bigger than Rowan. And that's the way that God works. He doesn't pick the one with the biggest pockets to to to, to send out his message. And everything in this in this in the in what I'm seeing in politics today is broken. It doesn't matter if it's the justice system. It doesn't matter if it's the world around us, terrorism, all the things that are going on. Uh, you know, it's it's everything is broken right here in this country and around the world. And what what we all want need is is a God fearing people to take back our country and to take back our our world and take back His world, not just our country, but the, his world, and, and I think we are on the path to doing that here in Iowa. And I think what what you know, I I, I generally work with both fundraising and field. Field operation is about strategically getting people together. The grassroots part of this campaign, and the other part that I work with is getting people together. Now we don't might not have as deep pockets as some of our competitors, some of our other competitors in this race. But what we have is heart. And what we have is a candidate that we truly believe, that I know we truly believe would do a great job, which I don't think the other teams have. They don't have that on that same level. So what I'm asking of everyone um, is to do everything that they can in to get people registered, to get Democrats to re-register as Republicans, do whatever we need to do to get ahead in, in this election. But I'm also asking um, you know, it says in the Bible, oh, your, your heart is where your treasure is. And your treasure is where your heart is. Not to do big donations for people that can help us. I can do $25, $50, $100, whatever we can do between now and the next 15 days amongst the community, people in churches, wherever we go, in all of our contacts, and people that believe in our cause and in our enemy, we can make a difference. We can be a Unlike anything this 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 party or this country. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. I and mean, honestly, uh, that's all. I can go. Yes, keep keep going. No, no, no. I, I, all I'm asking of you are the two things I ask of people right now that are helping us in this cause: get us voters and help, and and let's get people invested in this campaign so that they can take their treasure. And put it where the heart is, and let's let's change this country. Let's change. Let's change. Let's let's make the world a better place. Not because it because we think we're better than than anybody else. Because we know we're not. And we know who we follow. We follow the only God that exists, and the and, and the Master of the Universe. Excellent. Thank you. And, and Stefan, if you would go ahead and put the links in the chat uh, so that they have the links. And then they you can all uh, use that link personally, and then also to uh, to share that link with those who want to make a difference. Even there are some that might not be able to plan to maybe they didn't register 
to vote in time, like we knew some that were not able to fully register, they can still help in this way. Uh, have them have them give uh, if they miss the registration deadline. And as Greg said, uh, if they are registered Democrats, we have up until Election Day, which you don't want to wait till then, but we want them switching over just so they can caucus for us that night. By the way, my mother-in-law is a registered Democrat that ha that switched over to Republican to be able to vote for me in a primary. So it doesn't matter who it is. It's OK. Uh, I appreciate those. And I appreciated Dr. Wilson and others who, who were vocal about the, you know taking that step and doing that online. Uh, because they understand that it's more than a party. In fact, uh, I recommend this book to you, Truth Over Tribe. It says, pledging allegiance to the lamb, not the donkey or the elephant. And I think that's where we are, but it's truth over tribe. Uh, and if we want to see God's blessing on America again, we don't have a choice. And one of the things that Greg said that I think is so true, uh, you know, when he's talking about giving what we can, I will say this about giving. Even God can God can do the miracle in Iowa, okay? He can do, and maybe we call it the immigrant miracle in Iowa, but uh, God can do it, okay? The question is not, can he do it? The question is, will we do our part? And remember, when he fed uh, the 5,000 plus the women and children, uh, so 15, 17,000 people, when he did that, he didn't do it with nothing. He did it with five loaves and two fishes. So we have to give the little that we have and let him do the multiplication. And that's what we're believing God for. That's why, you know, we, we didn't ask, we don't need $100,000 tonight. If God lays it on your heart, talk to Greg. I promise you we need it yesterday. But <laughs> I'll tell you what God is asking is for us to be faithful with our five loaves and two fishes. And that's what I believe will win Iowa. Uh, and so, but I'm I'm so excited about the historic nature of our win, because when it's all said and done, people will know it's not me. And as Greg said, this is so much bigger than than me. Uh, they'll know it's not because of me. Uh, and they'll look and they'll try to explain it with the immigrant and how the immigrants in Iowa, and then they're gonna say, this is what's gonna take over the whole country. This is gonna reshape the entire 2024 election. All of the political consultants are gonna start scrambling and try to get in and cozy up to all the immigrant communities in the entire United States. In fact, we have uh, one of our uh, Hispanic Latino caucus on tonight, uh, Mr. Miguel Viles. Uh, uh, Senor, I don't know if uh, you are able to come on, uh, but uh, uh, to just give a word to our Latino community in Iowa, uh, if you would say just a brief word, that would be excellent. And then we will we will wrap up. Uh, Senor Miguel, Senor Viles. Great. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you, Mr. President? How are you today? Uh, buenos dias, senor. Buen dia. Uh, lo que quiero, what he wants. Primeramente, quiero darle gracias a Dios. First off, he just wants to say thank God, you know. Por reunir este for, gran grupo. For, reun for getting this group to be able to, you know, change the world. Sabemos. We know. Que no somos el gigante. We're not giants. Como nuestro... Como lo es Donald Trump. Like Donald Trump, we're not, you know, really big with money or deep pockets. Pero, but, tenemos una cosa que no tienen ellos. We have something that they don't have. Que Dios de nuestro lado. Which is God, you know. Dicho esto. Saying this. Muchas gracias. Thank you a lot. Por el tiempo de cada uno de ustedes. For all, just everybody's time. Y sé que la vida. And he knows that life. Por alguna grande razón. For some great reason. Nos junta hoy has united us together para lograr grandes cosas. To be able to do great things. Thank you so much. Muchas you gracias, señor. Muchas gracias, señor Vilas. We appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, so I want to just thank you uh, all for being here tonight. We're we're just thrilled uh, to be able to have this interaction. Uh, I once again I challenge each of you to invite fifty to have five on tomorrow. I appreciated. Uh, Mr. Gook explaining even how he did that for tonight. I'm very grateful for all who have joined. Uh, bring more. Let us keep building up every single night uh, for the next 10 nights. I promise you it is worth it. Give God a chance in this whole thing. He doesn't need any of us, but if we make ourselves available, if we will commit to this, I promise you we will see great and mighty things that we can't even imagine. 
Uh, he has he has called us to this point. He has put it in our hearts. And I'm grateful for each of you, the community leaders uh, of Iowa uh, that are making this possible. And many thanks to all who were on tonight. The links are in the chat. Uh, it will be ongoing. So we'll be able to pick this chat up also tomorrow night. And then we can reshare the, the Google link so you can sign up for the caucus, uh, the giving link, the book recommendation, Truth Over Tribe. Uh, so any of the things that will be a great resource and a help to you, uh, our website, rollandroberts.com, R-O-L-L-A-N, uh, roberts.com, feel free to, to share that out. Uh, there is also different videos. Uh, I was asked uh, about a video specifically about Africa. Uh, what, I, what my policies would be towards Africa uh, and things of that nature. And there is a web, uh, an interview that I did with South African TV. Uh, and it is a great 18 minute uh, segment and uh, with no commercials uh, that uh, is on YouTube. And then we've also provided it to uh, several of the leaders in Iowa. So feel free to share that because it gives insight. They even would ask me specifically what I would do for, for Africa. I have also done it for, South, uh, for Southeast Asia, for those in you know, Singapore and Malaysia and Taiwan and, and the Philippines. Uh, and so, and then also I was on Iranian TV and, uh, asking about, uh, you know, the relationship there and, and, and how, how, what would the policies be? So whether it's foreign policy, international diplomacy, uh, information on education, on economy, uh, on my tax plan, uh, which is, it just gives, everybody gets relief with my policies in every facet of life. I really believe that there will be things that happen under Robert's presidency that can't happen any other way. And it, it'll be odd. And it, what I mean by that is, imagine if wayward children, are their relationships are restored with their parents again. Imagine if there's less depression in the land. Imagine if there's less anxiety among people just because there's not so much turmoil and fighting and someone stirring the pot every single day to make us angry at one another or angry at life Imagine uh, just the, the, the peace uh, that, that can come both personally, individually, and also in the nation. Uh, and, and then obviously, and financially, and an opportunity, just a general zest and hope for the future. Uh, you know, we, we have a, 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 our son turned six months in two days, six months old. And it is hard. It really is hard. My wife and I were speaking about it even this morning. It is hard to imagine what kind of a world he will be, it will be uh, when he's 20, 30 years old. I mean, it's just, it's, uh, you don't want to think about it uh, because the direction we're headed as a nation and as a, as a people, the mankind, it is not a good direction, but there's, God always raises someone up. He always raises up a person that changes the tide of human history. When you and I talk about the greatest change makers in all of human history, obviously America has many of them. We'll be celebrating one of them on January 15th. But in scripture, there's also a whole bunch that have changed the course of the world. People like Moses, right? Uh, people like Noah, people like Joseph. Uh, and, and I've even thought about this, and I'll leave you with this thought. God didn't raise Joseph up to be just all about Joseph. Hey, look at me. I'm, you know, the, the vice pharaoh here over all of Egypt, the most powerful country on earth. God raised him up to help lead his people, which was benefited all of the Egyptians and everybody, but to benefit the righteous people in the land during a time of famine. Not because it was just the best of the best, but because God raised him up to help lead them through a difficult time. One of the things that I have known in my heart is that if God sets me as the president of the United States, it will be to lead America during a difficult time. We're in a difficult time. They are quickly leading us into World War III. There are many people of the powers that be that really desperately want World War III. They want us to be, uh, they, they want to depopulate the earth. That means you and me. I promise you we're not included in the 500 million that they want to keep alive. And so I believe I will be leading the country through a difficult time, but that we'll see it through the other side, just like Joseph did, where there were years of plenty. 
but it will be a time that we need the wisdom of God to navigate. And so I want to be that leader for you, for your children, for your families. If people knew, if people knew what was at stake with this presidential election, uh, we don't believe that the, the joke of a primary, the joke of presidential candidates from all parties, we would not be looking at any of them to lead the free world. If you were choosing a president for the world, not just for the United States, you would not choose any of the people currently uh, uh, running, uh, of the other people running for president, because no one person understands life and understands business and understands people and understands uh, spiritual matters, uh, which people are increasingly aware of the spiritual war that we are in as a nation and as a people. Uh, even even uh, Tucker Carlson recently has been talking about aliens, and the more he learned about aliens, he said they're actual spiritual beings. He has seen the evidence that the United States has uh, regarding these things, and he said it's too dark for me to even speak about. I can't even tell my wife. Uh, he said, I mean, it's very troubling for him, but he said it's absolutely spiritual in nature, and of course it is. These are the spirit. That's what we do is we fight spiritual wars. We're used to it. It scares people who are not. So you better know how to fight and win those. You don't go to uh, our military academies uh, uh, to learn how to fight a spiritual war. But that's the skill that is needed, in addition to all of the others on earth at this time. And so I know God has a plan for us. We must all be faithful. You do your part, and I promise you I will do mine. Uh, because I have all of your faces and all of your names in my head all day, every day, because I want to do right by you, and I want to do right by your families. I want to do right by your children. Senior Viles has his son, Gaspar, is one of the sharpest young men I know. He's going to be a leader one day uh, in his own right, and, and it's I want to do right by people. And if we can just get back to that, America uh, will be one nation under God again and with his blessing. So thank you all. Have a great night, and uh, may God bless each of you.